Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics to the second issue of the day. Barely 24 hours after the federal government handed down the fines on three broadcast stations, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad, on Tuesday, October 27, has again pushed for another social media regulation in the country using the hashtag NSAS protest as justification. In the words of the minister, Nigeria was sitting on a keg of gunpowder which could consume the country if the issue of fake news was not urgently addressed. According to him, the next war in the country might be fought on social media platforms, hence the need for the enactment of an anti-social media law. To discuss this with me, I have... Uh, Tony Usidame, a public relations expert and a social commentator. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, Kaide. Thanks to, uh, for having me. Yeah, I, I don't want to preempt what your position is, so I, I would like to get your first comment. What do you think about what uh, Elijah Lai Mohamed has brought to the fore again? Okay, um, thank you very much, Kaide, for the question. Before I answer you, um, I want to quickly make a clarification because there's a narrative that has been pushed in the media that the peaceful agitations of NSAS protesters is what has led to the looting and wanton destruction of uh, property that we've seen all across the country. I want to just start by setting the record straight that NSAS protests um, as far as we know, in most parts of the country, were legitimate struggles and they were peaceful. So we need to make a distinction between that particular struggle and those who are uh, going about looting and destroying private and public properties. As far as I am concerned, it is not NSAS protest that has led to any of those things. It is the poverty and level of unemployment and joblessness in the country, as well as the erosion of moral and cultural values in the country. So I thought I should start by making that distinction. Now to, to the question, um, my position on, the, on social media. I believe that some form of regulation uh, is necessary, as well as enforcement of existing legislation uh, to ensure a balance between the freedom of speech and the protection of public interest. However, as in every true democracy, the kind that Nigeria aspires to, the freedom, uh, uh, the free speech principle limits the power of the state to censor or control what is in the public discourse, okay? So the responsibility of regulating and moderating falls largely on intermediaries, such as the social media companies themselves. And as we have seen um, in the case of the NSAS protests, um, as it happened, most of the news that were being circulated that were false were actually flagged, for instance, by Facebook as well as Twitter. So the social media companies themselves are already um, living up to their responsibility as the watchdog and ensuring that content that is being circulated as, as far as possible is the real news. Okay, Tony. So uh, yes, um, yeah. I believe that regulation is important, but it should be at the purview of the social media companies. And government's role in this regard should be very limited. This is quite interesting. In other words, you're looking at who is the regulator, and the regulator should be the intermediary and not necessarily government. I find that quite, um, quite insightful. Sure. But let's look at uh, some other issues that we have had in the past and look at uh, the possible impact, the negative impact it had cursed. I like the example you gave. I remember how, uh, how Twitter and other social media platforms pulled down the claim by a doctor in the United States over the vaccine 
or the hydroxychloroquine. I remember that issue very well. And that probably uh, uh, give credence to what you're talking about. But how do we handle, let's come home now, to stories like, oh, Buhari is dead. How do we handle people even using the graphic of a very popular TV station to make it authentic? How do we handle uh, some kind of issues that have led to a real, uh, you know, you also remember the issue of, oh, the president was getting married to another woman, and quite a lot of people went to the street with that information. Yes, that's, that's a very valid question. For all the benefits that social media has, it also has its um, negatives, especially for people with um, ulterior motives. Okay, so we cannot completely censor. Uh, we cannot completely um, rule out fake news within the public sphere. However, just as citizens are guaranteed freedom of expression or the right to uh, free speech under the Constitution, that we also have a responsibility to look at what it is that we are uh, consuming on our social media feeds. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to do that is when a piece of information comes up on your feed, ask yourself, does it make any sense? Is the poster or the platform that is sharing such information credible? Now you can look at their antecedents. What type of sentiments have they been pushing out? Are those sentiments the type that spreads hate or that incites violence? These are some of the pointers that we as end users, we as citizens need to look out for before we um, accept any piece of information we find in the public sphere and decide to circulate um, such a piece of information. So like I said, we can never completely eliminate fake news in the public sphere. Even as it were, the um, social media companies are doing their best. In some countries, legislation compels them to look into complaints and to remove every uh, item that is considered illegal within, in some cases, 24 to 48 hours. But if you look at the uh, virality of social media, in just a few minutes, a piece of fake news that is put out there can go viral in, in just a few minutes. So in addition to the uh, safeguard that social media companies are uh, putting in place we need to look at what we are uh, disseminating before we share it. Okay, Tony, let's, let's get more practical now. You are a PR expert, so it might be easy for you to bring out all these, you know, rules on how to detect fake news. I'm a journalist. I, you know, I deal with this virtually every day where we have to call the source of the information to verify the story. And even while we're trying to verify the story, people out there will accuse us of caging the information, of holding the information. And the traditional media is usually accused of, you know, of not being saying the truth. It's been a troublesome, it's been a troubled waters. But let's look at how these, you know, Issues can be looked at. Let's, let's, I, I'm trying to, let me play the devil's advocate for the first time. You know, someone will say that, oh, Mr. Lai Mohammed, when he was in the opposition, he was also accused of spreading fake news. Now is the minister, and we he should be able to know that in a few years' time, he's going to leave that position, which means that he must be pushing for something that will outlive him. So can we just do the benefit of doubt to look at a good intention, but how do we ensure that we, they are not described as suspect and we can run with how this law should come about? Because we don't even want to listen to the issue at all. Let, let me just start by saying that the issue of fake news did not start today, just like you, you pointed out. It, it actually did not even start um, in this digital media era. Even when we had uh, just the print and, you know, television, radio stations. Fake news has always been 
a problem. It has always been an issue. In fact, it's as old as the oldest means of communication that man has mm. known. Now, the problem is that the social media platform offers a different set of qualities which make it a, a greater problem. I, I cited the uh, ease of sharing materials on social media. All you need is just um, a device and data that doesn't cost you much. And then once you put that material out, because of the shareability of materials and the virality, uh, uh, viral quality that social media has, this news can quickly go you know, everywhere in the world. You're here in Nigeria, you're sharing a piece of information in real time. Someone in Asia, someone in Australia can see the same news. So this is why um, it appears as if it's, it's, it's something new, but it's not anything new. And the way um, to deal with it, like I said earlier, you know, we're in an age where the media outlets, okay, on like the 20th century, where TV stations um, held the exclusive preserve of creating content, content that they felt was um, the, the public needed. In the social media er era, it is crowdsourcing, it is co-creation. So the, the media uh, agencies, the media, social media companies don't even own the content that is being shared. So this poses uh, a different set of problems compared hmm. to the traditional exactly. media. Like I said, it cannot completely be eradicated, but the social media channels already um, are, are obliged, and they're already doing it, living up to that responsibility, to, to devise means to ensure that what eventually gets published is what has been you know, what has been authenticated to, to a certain level. And sometimes, because of the level of technology that we have, it may take about 24 to 48 hours to do that, which is why I said the levels of safeguard that we need, the government, yes, has its role. The social media uh, uh, companies play a large role, but the users themselves are the ones who share these materials. It is not ghosts. Beautiful. It is people. It is you and I. Beautiful. So we have a responsibility to verify the source of whatever piece of information that we, we see on our feed and ensure that be, before we circulate them, we can authenticate them. Okay. That is a, a responsibility uh, that behoves Anthony, all of us as um, users of Tony, social I, I, media. I'm going to allow you um, round off this discussion with more steps that you can give to people on how to verify and authenticate stories. But before then... Thank I, I, you very much. Thank you very no, much before for that you opportunity, do that, Kyrie. Before, before you do that, let me ask you one question before you do that. Now, that question is, um, how do we also punish people who have caused some damage, who deliberately... I'll give you an example. Probably you can correct me if, if the information is wrong. You remember during this um, NSAS um, being hijacked, and we now have someone whether he calls himself anonymous, oh, go to this warehouse, go and loot it, and people got there, they found out that it is true. Until now, I don't know why that identity has not been discovered. We also have, you know, situations like people say, oh, DSTV has been hacked, and you saw so many funny things that happened. So how do we also get these corporates, you know, punished? not necessarily by government, but maybe by the people you want to suggest to us as regulators. Okay. Um, let, me just, let me first and foremost say that as regards social media, right, as regards the media in general, there are already laws in place. For, for you as a TV station, uh, there are certain laws that the country has put in place that guides the activities of um, media operations. houses. The social media is also a form of media. So certain responsibility falls at the step of the social media companies. Oh, I, I seem to have a problem with my um, power source. I think that, but that we can see you, we can all. hear you very but well. In any case, yes, in any case, what I was trying to say is that um, in this era, in this era of social media, we also have laws, laws that were already existing. Sorry, the, the, the power situation is being Don't worry, we can see Laws that voice. were already in existence, 
one of the things that we need to do is to ensure that those laws are actually enforced. There are laws against slander. There are laws against um, cyberbullying. Okay. There are laws against libel. You know, these laws already exist. So what we need to do is to ensure that they are actually enforced. Activated. We do not need any new regulation, uh, uh, regulation Kayade. The government, rather than look at the social media as an enemy, should look at ways to make use of social media to its advantage. Kayade, a report, it's January 2020 report, uh, shows that there are about 27 million social media users in Nigeria. All 27 million people cannot be against the government. All 27 million people cannot be amenable to sharing false information. Mm. Government needs to find a way to engage these people and ensure that it promotes its agenda. Okay. Okay, this is, this is a very important step that the government needs to take. It needs to promote its own agenda by using the social media. I remember when I was growing up, we had a very um, effective national orientation agency. Today, what is the, where is the national orientation agency? What is the function of the Ministry of Information? What is the function of all the media aides to the presidents and the governors? Can they look at the case of the palliatives? If the information coming out of the different state governments had been, if the information coming out of the different state governments had been looked into, and um, the information had come out earlier as to the reasons why palliatives were being kept, the level of looting that we had would not have happened because the people felt that the government deliberately shortchanged them okay. by keeping this palliatives. Okay. So this is one of the ways that government could have used social media to its advantage by carrying okay, the Tony, people along. Social Tony, media promise, is a tool that can be used to facilitate I promise I was going to allow you politics. Okay, Tony, I'm so sorry. You have so much to tell us. Uh, I, I, I promise that I was going to allow you give some tips. Maybe because of that promise. Maybe in the next 15 seconds, can you quickly share some other tips that people should take note of in detecting fake news? No, uh, Kairi, I just, I just want to state that this, this particular point about government using the social media to its advantage. The government must never see the people as anti-government. Not everybody is anti-government. Social media is a, is, a, is a force for good. So it should ensure that it is used to organize public participation in politics. It is used to get feedback from the people, get their views on okay. policy, and also to curate opinion. This is very, very important. Rather than complain about the negative sides, let's start. Let the government start to okay. use the social media That's to fair. push uh, the positives in the country. That's fair enough. I'm sorry we may not be able to take more steps, but I think you shared a whole lot of steps that we need to take. The conversation continues, as I will always say, on all our social media platforms. Thank you once again, Tony Usidame, Thank you, a public Kaide, relations for expert. Me. Yes, so uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a breather, and when we return, I will be giving you my take, especially on the frost discussion that has to do with the killings in, at uh, Lekki Toge. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. There is no gain saying the fact that the influence of social media is massive. Yet, it is not news that the seeming success recorded by the protesters is largely attributed to the social media, specifically Twitter. It is obvious to many, if not all, that there is hardly anything that can be hidden, especially if it is a vice. While the motive by the federal government is laced with suspicion to guard the truth, a call is also made to all to fall back to traditional media for fact-checking. I know this is an unpopular opinion out there, but guess what? The proliferation of media houses is a blessing in disguise. If a particular medium is a suspect of hiding the truth, the probability is high that another platform will give you a credible information. Remember that successive government is fond of accusing the media of working against them? 
Fake news should be condemned because we stand the risk of killing the truth and real news if this is not checkmated. Maybe not by government, but by our moral and objective compass. And that's my take on tonight's discussion. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now.